week we're going to be talking about numerical computations with NumPy, one of the most important packages scientific computing with Python. So an important thing when working with Python in general is it's an extremely productive language and it can be fast at a lot of things. So it's definitely not true to say that Python is slow in general, but there are certain things that can be slow. So working with text and things can often be very quick, but one of the things that tends to be slow is iterating over a large number of items in a container, say of millions of data points, that can be quite slow in Python, but fortunately the way Python works makes it possible to still write Python code but have those actual inner loops be uh, implemented in a lower level language like C that, that can be much quicker. And this is essentially what NumPy does, is it allows these kind of element-wise operations and other interfaces with C code to make your Python code very fast. So why is NumPy efficient? First, it gives efficient storage, so you get one nice dense block of data for all your numbers rather than having to have a Python object for each number. NumPy itself is written in C and Fortran and Cython to make those inner loops extra efficient. So NumPy is the de facto standard in Python for numerics, uh, and today is even a core part of interoperability with your numerical data for moving in and out of other languages like C and R and Julia. So first, a quick taste of NumPy. We want to fit a line through a set x, y data points. First, we're going to do some boilerplate, and then this script that we'll dig into line by line is a bit of code that says generate some data, fit a line, and then visualize our fit and our data all, all together. So here we have original data, our data points, and the fit that we created. Going through this step by step, the first thing we did was import the NumPy module to make all this numerical functionality available. The next thing we did was create some noisy data around the line y equals 2x plus 3. So the first step of that is to pick our number of data points and then create our x coordinates. Here we're using the lin space function that we'll get into. So we've got a uniform sampling of points between 0 and 1, 21 points. Then we generate the y data points. We first create a smooth line with y equals minus 2x plus 3. So there's our smooth line. And so a note here that NumPy, when you do things like addition and multiplication on an array, unlike a Python list, it does these operations element-wise, which means 2x says take every item in x and create a new array where every item is doubled rather than doubling the length of the list, for instance. So the next step is take our straight line and add a little bit of noise. Here you can see there's a similar line, but now it's noisy. And now we want to figure out from that noisy data, how do we reconstruct the parameters for the line? So what we're going to do is a least squares fit. That's saying we minimize for all our sample data points we minimize the error given an a and a b. And NumPy has a built-in function for this. So it's called least squares. and says compute the least squares solution to a linear matrix equation. So you give uh, your x and your y, and it gives you back the solution and all the error and everything. So here we create our array with x, and then we get our least squares fit for ax equals y. And we get four results. We're only interested in the actual parameters, so that's the first item. So we store that in a and b for our ax plus b equation. So a is our slope, and b is the offset at x equals zero. So our line is approximately y equals ax plus b. And if so the correct values would be a equals minus 2 and b equals 3. So let's check what we actually get. The result is minus 2.1 and 3.03. .03. So that's pretty close. And finally, we visualize the quality of our answer using the matplotlib library. And this is a plotting library that's kind of closely related to NumPy. That's used for plotting numerical data and all kinds of, and in particular, it uses NumPy a great deal under the hood to implement a lot of its plotting functionality. So here we see our plot. The points are our noisy data. The green line is our original input data. And then the orange line is our least squares fit that is close, to, but not quite exactly uh, on the green line. So now digging into a bit more detail about NumPy uh, and how it works and what are the relevant components. So the most core functionality of NumPy is this type called an ND array, n-dimensional array. That that is a homogeneous collection of items. Each item is the same type, so it can be an array of floating point numbers, of integers, etc. So the key properties of an ND array is that it has a fixed size and that there is one data type for all of the elements. And the contents of the array are mutable. So you can address into the array and change the contents of the array without having to create a whole new array. So there are lots of ways to create NumPy arrays, so you can Often when you're initializing a NumPy array, there are a few common ways to start out. So zeros says gives you an array of zeros. I passed three, so it gives me three zeros. Ones lets you initialize an array of ones. And in this case, I'm giving it a shape. Here I gave it a three and a one, which give me a three by one 2D array. And finally, empty is the fastest way to create a big array, especially. And it doesn't initialize the data at all, so it'll have random uh, values in here. So every time you run it, you might get different data. You would use empty generally if you want to do your own maybe complex initialization uh, and you don't want to bother wasting time initializing it to some values that you're not going to use. You might also want to create arrays with as a sequence. So lin space is given two boundaries 
create a uniform distribution of n points. Um, and you can pick whether to include the endpoint or not because linspace by default includes the endpoint. So like minus three to two will include both minus three and two and give you five points in that range. Whereas if you specify endpoint false, then it'll behave more like numpy range function and to not include the endpoint. We also have a range, which is the numpy equivalent of Python's range. So you can give it a start, a stop, a step, uh, and a d-type for whether it should be floating point numbers or integers. So now getting into the attributes of arrays. So in general, arrays have a data attribute, which gives you low level access to the raw data. This might be used for passing it to some other language. D-type describes the type of each element. Um, so that's usually going to be something that identifies integers, floating point numbers, etc. And dim is the number of dimensions. So you can have 1D arrays, 2D arrays, 3D arrays, up to uh, lots of dimensions, depending on the nature of your data. The shape gives you the rank in each direction. So the length of the shape is always gonna be the number of dimensions. And then the size is the total number of elements. So here's an example, given an array A, make a new array X of the same dimension and data type. So you can pass zeros or all these zeros and empty and everything can take a shape and a D type. But NumPy also has a convenience function that does exactly this for you. So you, so you add this underscores like, and there's a zeros like, ones like, empty like, etc. Often when you're doing some manipulation of arrays, you're gonna create a new array that has the same structure and type as the as the input. And so these like functions are useful. Say like, give me a new thing that is shaped and has the same type as, as one of my inputs. So D types, these describe the data types of each of the elements in the array. And so when you're in creating one, using one of these initialization functions, you can use the dtype argument, or you can access the dtype attribute of your array. And by default, when you create an array from a collect from an existing collection, then NumPy will infer what the logical type should be. So if you give it a bunch of integers, it will create an array of integers. If you give it at least one float, it will create an array of floats. And it can also do complex things with uh, with objects and strings. So a few more ways to construct NumPy arrays. You can create them from Python list. So you pass a list to array and you can optionally give a data type. It will create an array that looks very much like that list. You can also convert an array back to a list. And there's also a NumPy as array function that can convert anything that NumPy understands into an array. Scalars, lists, tuples, other arrays, anything that implements what's called the Python buffer interface. So a representation of low level data. So here we can use as array to write a function that takes a sequence and says, whatever that sequence is, interpret it as an array and then do some array math on it. So here we're giving it a list, an existing array, a floating point number and an integer, and they all work and do sensible things as if they were each given as an appropriate array. So the list is converted to an array of the same shape. The array is left unmodified. The float works as you might expect and the integer the same. So adding higher dimensions, so n dimensional, n can be greater than one. So when you initialize an array, it's you're given a shape where the tuple is the number of elements along each axis in the the dimension. So here a three tuple, so a three numbers means a 3D array with two elements in one dimension and three elements in the other two dimensions. So here's a two by three by three array. You can also create a two dimensional array from a two dimensional collection of Python lists. So a list of two lists, NumPy will infer that shape and create an array with the appropriate shape. NumPy allows up to 32 dimensions. That's probably enough for most of what we're going to be doing. And we can specify for any array, you can retrieve the shape from the shape attribute. So whatever you give here will be what comes out in the shape. You can always take an array, which represents some low-level data here. I've given it six numbers in a single list. We can call reshape to create a new array object whose shape is two by three. But importantly, this is a new view on the same data. So if I access item zero, zero on B, that is item zero in A. If I assign to that, so if I change that item in B, I can see I change the first item in A as well. And that's because B is a view on A with a different shape and not a copy. And so this is really important for efficiently working with large amounts of data to do as much as you can without copying data. So array indexing, this is one of the most important things in NumPy when you're working with two and 3D and higher dimensional arrays. So in general, indexing an array just like a list works as you might expect. So if you give a slice from one to four, this gives you items one through three. Fancy indexing, you can pass a collection of indices and it will return to sampling of items. And importantly, this always gives you a view on the underlying array and not a copy, unlike when accessing lists. So when you set values, if you assign to a scalar, the same set all the items in the slice to that value. So you can set values. You can assign any number of items to a scalar value. So you can say, set everything to zero, set items two to four to minus one, set the last item to the same as the first item, etc. So NumPy also has multi-dimensional indexing. So 
when you have a 2D array, you can, instead of passing give me item one, which will give you maybe the first row, you can pass two items separated by commas. So you can specify give me the item at index one comma two, and that's a single item. You can also you can also address twice. So give me item one and then give me item two in the result of that. You can also say give me the second column, but all the rows, give me the first row, but all the columns, or give me everything on every dimension. And so the number of items you can pass is the number of dimensions in your array. So here's an example where we're extracting sub matrices with some slicing. So we're gonna create a 2D array, a five by six array, and then we're gonna use slicing to get a view of this matrix to say, give me rows one and two, and then every other column of those rows and assign those to zero. So what's the result of that? So that's four I in one and two and J in zero two and four, set those to zero. We can also ask for the submatrix consisting of every third row and every second column. So this is saying, give me everything, skipping by threes. And this is giving, give me everything starting from two, skipping by twos along the other dimension. See that returns two and four and 20 and 22. So importantly, slices, as we mentioned before, create these views. So changing the slices changes the original. So this is both very useful for array assignment and also very, can be potentially hazardous. You wanna make sure that you know you're working with the underlying data, you're not working with copies. And so if for some reason you need a copy and you don't wanna modify the original, you can call the copy method to create a copy of the underlying data. So loops on NumPy arrays. Here we can iterate over each dimension of a 2D array. We can assign values and then we can print the values for each for each element. But this is just treating a NumPy array like a list of lists. Is there a better way to do this with NumPy? Especially if we don't know the shape or the dimension of, of the array. So if you just need to call something element wise, you can call the Ravel method, which gives you a 1D array, no matter what the original array was. So now getting to array computations, arithmetic on arrays are performed element wise, which means that each item in B is three times each item in A minus one. And we can compute signs and exponentials using functions imported from NumPy. So being able to use these array operations is gonna be much faster than doing element wise operations on a Python list. So here's an example of doing element wise operations on a large array as if it's a normal container. So we're iterating with a regular for loop and then for each item in A, we create the individual items for B. So how long does this take? It takes about 10 seconds. But if we do this with NumPy, where we say we let NumPy take care of the arithmetic, this is more like a 10th of a second. So that's about a hundred times faster. So we talked a bit about manipulating data and working with data in NumPy. The last piece is how do we visualize that data? And there are a lot of nice visualization packages in Python. And we're gonna talk specifically about Matplotlib, one of the most mature packages for visualization around. And it's widely used for creating publication quality plots. There's some great resources, especially the Matplotlib gallery, which I highly recommend for if you have a visualization, find an example in the Matplotlib gallery and then start from there. So here we import our plotting library and NumPy for creating our data. So we create X as a simple grid, and then Y is the cosine and Z is the exponential. And then we plot X and Y as lines. So here's our cosine and then here's our exponential. So simple plots where you have X data and Y data, you just pass X and Y to your plot function. There are lots of options for customizing your plots and adding labels, customizing the width of lines, the styles, the colors, and you can also save files to disk for if you in, want to include them, export them to include them in a blog post or a website uh, or a publication paper or something like that. So here we changed our first plot. We gave it a label for use in the legend called cosine. We made it blue. We specified the to be a bit heavy with a 2.5 line width and said the line style should be a solid line. And for the exponential, we said it should be a red, the same width and a dotted line. And then we labeled our X and Y axes and told Matplotlib to put the legend on the chart. And finally, we saved the figure to disk. This isn't necessary if you're working interactively, but it's useful if you're saving the figure for use in importing into a presentation or paper. There's lots of plots you can do in PyPlot. There's lots of plots you can do with Matplotlib. You can do scatter charts, bar charts, contours, 3Ds, surface plots, all kinds of stuff. A scatter plot example. So here we're creating, instead of just X, we've got two dimensional data. So random samplings on X and Y, and then our actual values are a function of X and Y separately. And this is the kind of data you wanna use a scatter plot for. In this case, X and Y are our coordinates, and we use our values for the C argument, that's the color. And so what happens when we do this, the color, so from blue to yellow, represents the value at each point of the arc tangent at, at each X and Y coordinate. And you can also plot functions, right? Because NumPy does element-wise operations, running what looks like a scalar function on a NumPy array computes the value for every item element-wise. If you create a collection of points for X, and then you just do Y equals function of X, you get all the points for that function for all the X values. And that's our basic introduction to NumPy.